number five. I'm Art Chantry. You're probably wondering who I am. Cultural propagandist of the lowest. I'm a mind fucker, and I do it for money. We all know what a screwdriver looks like. We all know what its function is, but when you look at a catalog full of screwdrivers and there's 30 different screwdrivers, how do you know which one to buy? They all have very specific functions, and you can examine the picture and see how they work. Long ones are for reaching, short ones are for up close work, you know, things like that. I'm not really a graphic designer. In a way, it's our job to like fuck with your brains. We, we're mind fuckers. I, I might put a dead baby on a punk rock poster. I wouldn't put that on an annual report for Warner Brothers, but I could put it on a punk rock poster because essentially I'm trying to scare people away from the punk rock. It really wasn't until the 1960s that the phrase graphic designer emerged and replaced the term commercial artist. I'm, I'm a commercial artist, I, and that is a totally different dialogue than a fine artist. One of the things that the Happy Faces has been around so long and so many permutations and so dismissed as garbage that the idea of making a serious study on who did that, where did that come from, is probably one of the outside of the swastika is maybe the most famous piece of graphic design of the 20th century. I mean, it is like everywhere. All right, let's start talking about cheerleaders named Debbie who would dot their eye with a happy face. I mean, were they doing advertising? I mean, this is where it came from. Yeah. People drew a little human face of dots. If you go back into cave paintings and stuff, I'm sure some of those stick figures had happy face heads on them, you know? I mean, it's like a very, very, very ancient piece of visual language that has been with us probably as long as we've been able to draw the stick in the mud. The very first comic strip, which is The Yellow Kid, The Yellow Kid's face was based on the Alfred E. Newman face as it existed prior to The Yellow Kid, the very first comic strip. Alfred E. Newman was around for hundreds of years, and it had been just like a, a regular joke face. It was often associated with what me worry. That face is the village fool. You know, the ears that stick out, the gap tooth, the big stupid grin, the wide set eyes, all that. You know, the whole thing looks like George W. Bush, let's be honest. He's a, he's a dead ringer for Alfred E. Newman. Uh, they made a rubber face mask of it, and then it showed up as a, as a mask for sale in the magazine, and then started showing up on the cover of Mad Magazine and was used on every single cover from that point on. Kind of like the way Hugh Hefner used the Playboy Bunny, which is where they got the idea. When they unearthed Pompeii and Herculaneum, those Roman cities that were buried by Mount Vesuvius when it erupted, they found lettering and writing on the walls and their first assumption was that it was graffiti. But once they translated and figured it out, it was saying things like Edith Giuseppe's, they were ads, they were billboards, they were sign painting. This isn't a great man theory. Now, when the grunge scene broke out, it wasn't a great man sitting down and thinking, I'm going to do something and call it grunge. It's like I, I compare it to tossing a pebble into a pond, and the pebble creates a ripple, and by the time it gets to the edge of the pond, it's turned into sometimes a tidal wave, and people die. It was also scary because, you know, people began to die, literally. Every kid that got molested, there's probably 50 housewives that slept with the priest. How can you trust any of those guys? There isn't enough violence on TV.